All right, episode 11 tonight. Uh, we've got uh, two special guests on here, Michael Schaffner and Kevin Baumgartner. I'm going to throw our intro up. I see that Mike's already in, so uh, we'll get this going. There we go. Mike, can you hear me? I can. All right, sweet. So let's uh, start out by doing a little backstory on you. This is going to be live on Facebook, by the way. Um, I, I met you a few years ago now. You had uh, the Vulgar Display <coughs> Mega Truck. Yeah, uh, yep. that was a truck I used to own. Well, sold it a couple years ago. But... Yep. That's, I met you probably where Benson. I don't know where it was, but so. yeah, I think uh, you came up with your motorhome and a fishing boat when uh, they were working on the track there. Oh, okay, I remember that weekend. Was yep, that... you were trying to catch some northerns. We were trying to get some corners fixed on the track. Yep, yep. yep. So, so this uh, is high actine. Let me let me ask you a couple of questions first. All right. <laughs> so we got high actine, high actine media. This is the. High Octane Media Podcast. Yes, it is. So we're on, that's what we're on tonight, baby. I've not listened to you guys yet, so I'm just uh, I'm new to this program a little bit, but I'm excited uh, to be part of it. Um, right on. We have a yeah. I hope we have a good conversation tonight and talk about some stuff, some interesting stuff, some some mud trucks, some mega trucks. You know, that that's kind of where I took over. I have a partner in crime here that uh, he's okay. MIA right now. We do. Okay. We cover all motorsports in in the state of Minnesota. Okay. And uh, okay. I kind of thought that might be the case, but I wasn't sure. So. Yep. I uh, I got him into mud trucks, and uh, he doesn't know a lot of you guys yet. So whenever we have a, a week where we have the mud guys on, I usually just take over and and I ask the questions because I know a little bit more about it. And when we have derby guys on and whatnot, then both of us sit here and and we chat. Okay. Cool. Cool. Right on. So how long have you guys been doing this for? Um, Sloan started the company like seven, eight years ago. Um, okay. We gained a bunch of traction this this last year. Um, started following a lot more stuff, and uh, we started the podcast now eleven episodes ago every Wednesday seven o'clock. Um, it live it goes live on Facebook originally, and then uh, we have it on Spotify, and we also link it to our YouTube channel. So. Okay, well, that's, that's awesome. Glad to be part yeah. of it. You know, uh, any chance I get to talk about, you know, this, the motorsports in general, but especially uh, the one that I'm involved in, which is, you know, mud trucks, mega trucks. Right on. I live, I live and breathe that stuff, so it's always fun to be able to talk about it, but, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you've got a motorsports background, and it's – I've actually seen – I was trying to figure out when I first saw you, and uh, I was might have been snooping on your Facebook a little bit. I found a picture of a blue S10 that just had vulgar display in the back window, and I was like, "I saw that truck before." You tipped it on its side at Mudfest, I believe. I did. Yep. Well, that I guess. Well, for me, I mean, if I can give you some backstory if you want to hear a little bit about. You know, Absolutely, that's what we're here for. I didn't. I didn't necessarily start out in trucks. In fact, in fact, I used to, uh, I didn't quite understand why people like trucks so much back when I was younger, as much as I'm into them now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that I, I felt that way before about them because I grew up, uh, you know, 
as a young person, drag racing, street racing, even in my teen years, you know, 16, 17, 18, and, you know, had some pretty fast cars back in the, in the eighties, late eighties, especially was a big thing back then. We used to cruise Anoka on Saturday nights and all the big names that used to show up back then. And, you know, I mean, sure. the horsepower now was is insane compared to what was going on back then, but it was still, there was still some pretty impressive stuff. We had cars that ran low tens and nines, some of them on the street. So, but I never understood trucks back then really, but you know, I knew it just didn't make sense to me why you'd want to go slow like that. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, you know, I did eventually get invited. I helped a friend of mine, Eric Larson, Eric has passed now. He, I don't need to get into those details, but he died about three years ago. Um, he used to own a truck called the Budweiser. But I was a mechanic. I had a shop uh, fixing cars at Anoka. I was a pretty young man back then, of course, in my early 20s. But right. Eric um, Eric had was building this truck called Mudweiser, and I didn't know much about but I, I knew how to you know build motors, and I was a mechanic by trade, so I got involved with him. And he always talked about going to these mud mud events and um yeah that's where it started and I, was, I helped him build that truck and i went to my first mud racing event it would have been mud fest in 96 to debut that truck it was i don't know if you were around back then or not but that's a um, long time ago that You're was probably... about the time we were getting in it uh you know nathan and i we we kind of started in my backyard uh we had a trail just up the road from my house that we were playing in. And then what is Benson Bog Days now used to be Grandpa's backyard um, back then. So that would have been pretty early in our mudding career, but uh, yeah, we were still wrecking fun. stuff and figuring out how to get it fixed and get it to school on Monday. <laughs> right. Well, that's kind of, you know, I started started at at, uh, at Mudfest where I first went. It was like Memorial Day weekend. 1996 i think it was 97 maybe right there but right on. i did it for a, i did it for about two or three years and then i kind of got back out of it for a while um got back into drag racing i bought a rail dragster and started doing that for a few years did some stock car racing for a while there um but the mud scene was cool to me i loved it you know but it, it was it hadn't evolved anywhere near where it is now i mean it was like the biggest truck back then, which was a cool truck, was was uh, Steel Wheels, if you know that truck. I'm not familiar with that one. Steel Wheels was uh, now it belongs to Rob Lawrence. He actually, I don't know if you know who Rob Lawrence is. Yep. Do you know Rob Lawrence? He's a fabricator out of, I think he lives in Isanti. But yep. He builds a lot of. He actually he did some work on a truck for me last year. But he's uh he's a really good fabricator. But he um he bought Steel Wheels and is reviving it now. I think he just. I think it'll be out this year for sure. Oh, cool. But you'll see it. I, I could explain more about that truck, but whatever. That was the, you know, one of the biggest trucks back then. There was a lot of 44 boggers and, you know, just everybody was mudding. The goal was to not get stuck really back then. You know, it wasn't like, uh, now things are so competitive that it's, it's a different, it's a different thing now than it was then, but you know, it wasn't competitive. The early years that got me into it were, uh, they had a deal in, Bovee, Minnesota, of all places. And it was literally like the longest pass. Everybody got stuck, but the longest pass was the guy that won the weekend. Right. And uh, it evolved from there. It was kind of like a Ma and Pa kettle days thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah. it evolved from there to, uh, you know, Nathan told me quite a few years ago, he's like, I want to put some jumps out in my mud pit. And I was like, you're crazy. But <laughs> that's exactly what you guys do now. You know, it's yeah. about jumping and hitting a hole, making a big corner, and high <laughs> horsepower, tons of wheel speed, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. So, well, I, I remember going to those early events back in the 90s, and they were big. There was, you know, I think three, 4,000 people there back then. That was kind of in the early years of it. But right. there were still big events, and it was fun, and we had a blast, and, you know, it was just a big get-together. And I didn't go back until... I went back to Mudfest again in 2012, so I had missed about whatever, how many years that is, quite a few years, right. 15 years or something. But I came into Mudfest in 2012 and walked into Reckless and Dominator and The Grinch, and <laughs> yep. I was like, holy things have, 
have changed a little since I was last around. And it was exciting, you know, to see, uh, you know, blower motors and these big horsepower trucks and just the aggressive driving of, you know, Chad, you know, Dave Hunt, uh, you know, uh, Chad Karnovich, Dustin Romaker. Yeah. You know, we even had Bob Streeter over from Michigan playing around. And I mean, the names go on, but those were, you know, I forget the guy that owns the Grinch name, even though I know I know the name, but or owned it back then. Just all the names. Brad Volkman, he was a big name back then, you know. Um, right. But it was awesome to see that level of stuff going on in a in the middle of a mud pit, you know. I was like, hey, this is good. <laughs> right. These guys aren't afraid to go mess up their stuff and get after it. And you know, and it was it was just amazing to see that. And that really like uh, you know, planted the seed for me then and uh I ended up buying that blue S10 you talk about. I bought that in 2013. Okay. It was a working truck. Um, I got it from a guy named uh, Russ Zimple. He was uh, he owns an auto parts store and a repair shop out of Mora. Okay. But he had that that blue S10 was a truck. You know, it was it was done pretty well. And you know, two and a half tons, etc. And <clears throat> but that there really wasn't much racing going on yet back then. It was just all bogging stuff. But I bogged that thing for a year or two. And that's kind of when racing first started taking off around here, you know. So I ended up racing that truck a few times and uh, freestyled it a couple of times. That's when I rolled it the one time at, at uh, Mudfest. I rolled it. I ended up actually winning the freestyle when I rolled it that day. But, yeah. of course, the competition was a little more thin then than it is now, you know. <laughs> right. No, for sure. But that's, you know, those were the those were the early, the early days of all that stuff, you know. Um, and I did call that truck vulgar display. I always wanted to have a truck. I was a big Pantera fan growing up, so I figured I that's where it came from. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it well because well, I wanted the I wanted the I wanted the blower motor truck after seeing them blower motor trucks, but that was out of my pay grade at the time. Right. But uh, you know, that was a, a goal I had, and that was always a dream I had. And you know, slowly uh, we evolved into that. I had um, you know Dustin built the frame and basically built my first vulgar display truck back in the day the, that had been like 2015 that summer I debuted it okay it didn't have much of a motor when I first built it you know it had two and a half tons and had a 700 horse big block you know it was a very well built heavy duty truck I could jump it, it had eight you know eight CNC shocks on it yeah had nice that was still a front stuff. engine and full frame truck though correct that was not it was, it was all two all tube oh. and rear engine and then i ended up that's vulgar that's that the blue one was the original vulgar then i built this new one called vulgar in 15 that was the one dusty built okay and that had a you know just a had a methanol and methanol injected big block but and we took that quite a few places around the country you know in texas and michigan and you know stuff like that but right on. i was just just getting those were like the nervous years when you first get your first big truck Right. You know, there's a lot of adrenaline going through your and, and uh, just nerves when you're in front of a big crowd when you first start doing it, you know. That, I'm that, still that in my nervous like, years. I still got a one ton truck. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm just saying that's you get it is what it is, but I mean you get used to stuff, but no, I have the utmost you know. respect for you guys with that high horsepower and flying through the air and, and being able to land and that's jump, it. take a wicked corner. You know, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> going on there. There's a lot of moving parts that you know. I'm proud of just yeah, being a bogger a of, still. <laughs> there's a lot of kinds of, uh, I always talk about it, you know, when you, sometimes back then at least, you know, you get these, you get these situations where they're pretty scary, you know, in, in essence, really it's, there's a lot of, there's different kinds of fear that you experience. <laughs> there's oh, fear sure. of embarrassment. There's fear of, you know, getting hurt. There's fear of wrecking your X amount of dollar truck, right. you know, or all three of them combined at once, you know, <laughs> it, it multiplies the fear factor to a, a point where you're, your adrenaline almost gets drained at times, but as time goes by and you get your seat time in, you learn to, you know, you learn to just do it anyways. And, you know, after the years, and I've been all over the damn country now, but you know, right. you, you learn, to, uh, you learn, you learn to deal with it. And for me now, for the most part, I mean, you kind of have a little calm before it starts and people are, are you okay? I said, yeah, this is how, if I'm calm right now, this is a good thing. Right on. Cause if I'm shaking right now, if I'm nervous, it's not going to be as good, but, I could tell now if we got a big freestyle event coming or a big race coming. If you're nice and calm, it helps you think good when you're out there trying to make the moves, you know, to trying to make sure you're shifting right and paying attention and, right. you know, but 
you know, I had this, uh, anyways, vulgar turned into what it turned into. We ended up getting bigger and bigger motors over the years. And right. We ended up with 1700 plus horsepower at the end there. So that was pretty exciting. You know, got to drive that truck in a lot of kind of refined it over the years, got to drive it all over the country in different events. And, you know, had a, had a lot of good memories in that truck, you know, got to go on dirty motor truckers with that truck and win. Right. Randy Priest, that was like, you know, one of the highlights. Um, and I could talk about the highlights. There was a lot of highlights in, in my, you know, semi-short career, I guess, you know. Um, you know, a lot of these out-of-state events we went to were, it was great to meet the guys that do the same sport you do across the, you know, across right, right. the, you're like, you do the same shit I do, <laughs> you know, and you get up, there's a bond, there's a bond from that, you know, it's, and those guys become instantly like your friends and, you know, and you, you can keep in contact, of course, with them through Facebook and you know, everybody's watching everybody's stuff. And, you know, that it's a, it's a pretty, pretty strong tight bond that you create with these, everybody in the family in general, but the out of state guys, I don't know, it's just something about it, you know, it usually takes longer to get to know people, but, it seems like when you meet people out of state, you you can uh, you just gain an instant respect. It seems like you know. Heck yeah. But, yeah. You traveled all over with that truck, then you decided to sell it because you were building this new one, correct? Well, I was gonna run two trucks. I was gonna have Bob drive Vulgar, and I was gonna oh. drive this new truck, which I hadn't had a name for yet. But this new one took a lot longer than it, than I was expecting it to. <laughs> Well, there but, was all sorts you know, of stuff that happened in there. You know, we had a pandemic and everything kind of slowed down. The whole world slowed down for a while there. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that happened. I mean, and, you know, Vulgar got rolled in the middle of it. And the same guy yeah. that built Heathen, you know, had to fix Vulgar. And that took an, an extra six months, which did delay, you know. Yeah. I don't know if you all have heard of Chris. I can't even say his last name properly, but I call him Chris Dazerak. But <laughs> it's not yeah. how you say it. <laughs> But he's a builder out of Wisconsin, um, uh, Eliminator chassis. He's just amazing. You know, the guy's a fabricating genius, really. Um, you know, his work is, you know, second to none, really. I mean, there's a lot of good builders out there, but, you know, he's one of the best that I've ever seen. And, I, and no no, uh, no offense to anybody. Else. I mean, Dustin's amazing. And what okay. Romaker's done and has learned and became is, you know, he's a guy that I look up to a lot. You know, I appreciate his what he's done for the sport in general has just been amazing. And there's a lot of guys like him out there, you know, all the, all the guys that build and, 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 uh, fabricate and support guys like me, you know, I'm a, I'm a fabricator to a point, but I'm more, uh, I'm more, you know, I'm a engineering mechanic, you know, right. <laughs> I right. went to school for autom automotive and I know like, I know how to fix cars and diagnose cars and, you know, do car repair. And I, I can weld and fabricate metal. And I love doing it, but, it's not my primary job right and uh I, I want my stuff to be the best as possible it can be so if there's well, a you get to a big old intricate machine like what you got going on there and like you have to have the exact special you know that's your specialty when you build something like that and there are a lot of good yeah. fabricators out there that do it um in reality there there's specific field that they're in is because they're that good and yeah. you know you can build a motor you can probably build a motor that you know kicks some serious ass but to put all these moving parts together and all these angles for this tube chassis and everything it takes a whole bunch of people to get that right 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 there's there's literally probably i bet there's 50 professionals involved in this new build you know what right I mean? from the axles to the shocks to the you know to the heim joints to the t case i mean everything was custom made and you know everything was custom you know to fit this little puzzle it took almost three years to get it right and you know and some of them were multiple attempts to get it right you know we'd put something together it didn't work we had to pull it back apart and sure. you know i mean the end result we have uh you know a truck that's it's lighter than vulgar probably by 1500 pounds i haven't weighed it yet but i'm guessing it's probably you know less than six or around six right now you know it's got a, a 2200 horsepower engine you know in that range which is enough to get it going oh, God, it's yeah. lower to the ground it's shorter it's got rear steer um you know it's it's just a big old mega truck still but it's just a, it's a smaller version of vulgar i did get to drive it a couple of days ago for the first time in my front driveway just to test the just to see if it would shift and it it uh 
It was pretty impressive what it yeah. did. I almost ended up going to the ditch across the street by accident, but <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, I, I, my, my uh, excitement is rejuvenated for the sport in general for the, from this truck. So I'm excited to see, you know, what, uh, what comes of it. I imagine this first year will be a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, just refinements and tuning. And I think we have a really good starting, uh, you know, it's a good starting point, but you know, like any new build, it takes time to get all the quirks uh, worked out for the most part. And well, you I'm got a whole new truck to learn how to drive too. You know, I mean, I'm sure that's part of the learning curve, right? And that, that part's the whole, that's part of it. You know, I never had her steer, so I got to learn. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, the whole thing is, this is going to be a whole lot to handle. I imagine this truck. So it should be, <laughs> it, sure looks <laughs> it like should it. literally scare the shit out of me. I'm sure. Uh, you know, and, uh, as, as comfortable as I was in vulgar at the end, I will probably have reignited every fear I've ever had when I get this thing again. Right. So I'm looking forward to that actually, because the other side of that is a, a lot of good, a good stuff that comes back anyway to the feelings of having gone through all that is uh, it's, you know, awesome. So that's why we do this, you know, right. If it didn't scare the shit out of me, I wouldn't want to do it anymore. And it still does. So that's hey, my little one ton truck does. So I, I get it. I totally do. Yeah, especially get the crowd going and, you know, and you got some competition going and, you know, especially head to head. Oh, my God. Right. It's exciting, boy. There's some new fat, there's some new fast trucks out there. I mean, we have different trucks than they have other parts of the, you know, other parts of the states, you know, the little guys down south. And I mean, the cruda type builds that are, you know, those are smart builds, no doubt. They're they're a different truck than what I drive. But, um, right. you know, those guys are fast as they possibly can be. They're fast trucks, you know. They don't jump 100 feet, but, you know, that's all right. Right. You know, <laughs> everyone. So speaking of jumping 100 feet, um, yeah. you going to Mudfest this year? I am going to Mudfest this year, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I talked to Jared, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, Jared Wegham. Sure, and uh, sure. you guys had a little long jump competition back in the day when uh, you had still had Vulgar. Oh, yeah. And he told me, and I'm just going to tell you right now, He's going to go for the long jump. He wants his title back. <laughs> so I think he beat me that last time. Honestly, I think he did I, too. Probably, but it's all right. I, I, uh, you know, this new truck, I'm not ready to jump it yet like that. She's still too new. And I don't, I run a single shock. So, but we'll see. You know, there's a whole thing. Some things might change uh, with that. You know, I may end up adding another shock and do it. We'll see. I got to see how it performs. And sure. I probably won't be jumping 100 feet this year with it, but you know, this <laughs> but in due time. Cool. It's coming. This was more purpose built for, you know, for really racing. That's where things have evolved to for, especially, you know, for me, but for a lot of us, you know, it's freestyling is awesome, but freestyling is really tough on your shit. Oh, yeah. And it costs a lot of money to replace transmissions and, you know, shit gets broken. You flip them and, and all the extra wear. When you're out there for four minutes on a, you know, on a blower motor, man, it's tough on a blower motor to run four minutes straight wide open, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they they it's not good for them. And to go through a motor like that, you know, it can be anywhere from three thousand plus up to ten, depending on what happens. You know, right? Burnt out cylinder heads, and you know, blown out trannies, and you name it. So I try to, you know, freestyle is awesome, but man, it's tough on shit. Oh, yeah. you know, the racing you can, the racing has got a lot of advantages. It's it's super competitive, so it's super exciting that way. You know, uh, your shit gets less dirty in general, which is kind of <laughs> cool. No offense to mud racing in general. I like the mud, but you know, if you're submerged in mud versus, you know, racing on a track, it's, it's less cleanup. And then there's just less overall time where you're beating on your stuff. So you're less likely to break at major parts. You know, you can sometimes race a whole year with the same training if you're lucky, you know, right. and that doesn't happen. When I was racing Vulgar all over the country, fuck, I put in four trainings in one year and two motors. Yeah. You know, there's $50,000 in parts. It's like, you know, racing doesn't really cost as much to do that for the most part initially it obviously does but right. the maintenance level is a lot less for racing so that's kind of i think why it's grown so big you know and there's a bigger payday you know there's more paydays which is nice to get some money back you know but yeah you drag these things all over the place like you said you drag it all over the country um yeah it doesn't you know it, it costs fuel to get there you got to pay for an event you got your entry fees of course you guys are going to be competitive enough to try to get a little bit of that purse back, you know? No, right. For sure. I mean, and, and we don't count on that, obviously. No, but 
it, it, it never hurts to take home whatever you can get. If it's a thousand or 2000 or something, you know, right. Even though if, if you can win back 10 grand in a year, you're doing all right. At least for a guy like me, you know, that's only happened once to me maybe, but <clears throat> whatever, it's better than all going out and nothing coming back. <laughs> I, I so. think as far as uh, what I've seen just from my point of view, there's a bunch of new race trucks this year. And uh, yeah. of course, everybody's going to want to go out there and prove themselves. I think you definitely have one of the top ones to watch, um, well, you know, in my opinion. My truck's, big, my truck's a big truck, so we'll see. I mean, yeah. honestly, I you know, I think someday they'll probably have to – I like big motors, you know what I mean? You're sure. not going to put a 2,200-horsepower motor into a 3,500-pound a truck. It just wouldn't work, you know what I mean? It would blow the truck apart. Right. But I like big motors. I like making big power. I like making noise. I like that earth-shattering, chest-pounding, you know – just insult to the to mother nature you know what I mean? right that's what's cool to me i love that shit. i grew up in, you know watching nhr events and you know I, those are memories that I, i'll never forget you know seeing those top dealers come by and that's amazing you know if you haven't experienced that before and, and a kid's out there in the crowd watching you do that it's you know that's why we do it you know and uh but that's it i because of that i have a different truck than a little race truck you know so right. i think one day they, they, they will probably implement some sort of weight class potentially or a different class that there should be like a cut up at 5,000 in my opinion for trucks that are below five should race a certain class and above five. We're really the only sport left that doesn't have a class of weight for weight classes, you know, but, gotcha. or I could build a smaller truck, but I just, I like, I like, the, I like trucks like I have. I like the big heavy duty, big power trucks that really make a lot of noise, you know? Oh, for That's sure. Cool. So anyways, <laughs> So what do you think of the classes that broke the, you're, you're going to race built to beat this year? Yeah. I mean, I, the classes are similar to before it's, you know, the, we're, they're, they're where they need to be for now. I mean, okay. I, I don't honestly know how it even, you could even work a weight class in there, but it'd be tough, you know, but and I, it's tough to bitch at a guy for building a light little truck when it's, a, when it's the best decision, because it really is the best decision. I mean, the weight over horsepower ratio is what wins races, you know? Right. Right. And those guys get moved around the track. It's fun to watch them go around, you know. I just, I made my choices a long time ago on the trucks I build. And, you know, I'm just, I'm of a certain breed, I guess, that way, you know. Maybe someday I'll build a smaller truck, but it just hasn't happened yet. I don't really have a desire yet either, but it does suck coming in second place to them sometimes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully the new one's a little more competitive than before, but it's still pretty heavy. So, right on. We'll see. Heavy is usually yeah. tougher, though, right? I mean, of course, there's, there's there's advantages, you know. I got bigger, stronger axles, bigger, stronger frame. You know, everything is just larger, bigger stuff. Made to take more abuse, shouldn't break as often, so right, that's good. But ah, that makes sense to me. I'm a big horsepower guy myself. I uh, I originally tried to stuff a pretty pretty stout 383 in my uh, in my mud truck, and I broke everything. Um. I still have that on the plans. I'm going to build another one, but I think we're going to go with a 5.3 this year, just a mild one. I'm going to go down and play in the mud a little bit anyway. But, uh, right. yeah, there's there's something about that big blower motor when you guys take off from the line and, you know, your chest rumbles and you're like, whoa. And you look across That's the sick. grandstands and across the field and everybody gets <laughs> everybody's attention. They're like, whoa, what was that? Yeah. That that That's to me good. is is a part of the sport that you can't get unless you're standing right there, you see it firsthand and holy crap, that that's what gets a lot of people addicted. I know that's what got me addicted. It got me addicted. That's why, you know, it's always been my, it's been like a dream to have, you know, to, to live, to live the, have a truck like that, I guess. And, you know, get to enjoy the experiences that come with it. So, you know, it's been, right uh, been a lot, been a lot of that happening in the last, you know, five, six years for me. So, I took a year off last year, obviously, but right. hopefully this year is a good year. I expect next year to be even better. You know, we get this thing more dialed in and get, get more of the final product. Vulgar, you know, this over the over probably a five year period, it got better and better every year. You know, but it's like all things. You have the you know the the ascending curve in the beginning where things are exciting, and then they finally plateau, and then they kind of start to go down. Event, <laughs> right. you know, you try, try something new and different. You know. Whether it's a build or it's a, you know, whatever. That's just how life is, you know. You, sure. I've seen a lot of guys build, build a vehicle for 10 years and then end up selling it. They like, why'd you ever sell it? I said, that's just how it is, brother, you know. 
when you're on the way up, things are great. Finally, when it plateaus and you're on the backside of it, you know, you lose, you lose interest and you want something different or a change, you know, to stimulate you, you know, but. You know, my, everybody teases me, my bog truck, I've been building on it for five years and uh, right. I thought I had it right last year. Um, two days before Benson's, we blew it up <laughs> and uh, apparently I didn't yeah. have it right. And I actually right. contemplated this year. I was like, screw it. I can sell it as a roller right now. I'll find something else. You know, we've been following all these derbies and stuff. I was like, well, maybe I'll build a couple derby cars or whatever. But yeah. I walk by the thing every day and it hasn't beat me yet. So, you know, like you said, you got a new truck. You got the excitement of learning it. You, you know, you're going to perfect what you have there as a machine. I, I haven't even got there yet, you know. No, right, right. Well, you know, that's that's what that's what the that's the journey, right? <laughs> it absolutely is. Yeah, I think that's what it is with all the motorsports that we follow. Um yeah. our catchphrase is it's all about the experience. Sometimes the experience isn't great for your pocketbook or or you know, isn't a spectacular feat that you pulled off. It's yeah. I worked this hard to get this, you know. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, that's how it is, you know. I mean, literally, I probably have a lot. I wish I know for sure I have more enjoyment out of working on my truck and you know engineering the stuff that you know to make it work and because that's that's the long period of time that you get to do that. You know, it's over a month or two months or however however long. The racing part is all done in one day. You know, or right. in seven seconds or eleven seconds of just you know just pure adrenaline rush. You know, which is a cool part too, but it's a very short lived experience. And there's a lot of anxiety that goes with that too, you know, so that's not always the, a positive thing, but I mean, you, you, the other side of that, like I said, is always to, to challenge yourself out of your comfort zone and face your fears and, you know, to and get through them. And, um, that's, that's, that's part of personal growth and it's good to do that stuff no matter what you're doing. And, uh, and there's always a reward for you at the other end, you know? So Heck yeah. that's always, I, I like doing stuff like that. That challenges me, you know, I always have. <clears throat> but yeah, this new truck will be fun to see what the hell that thing does. So <laughs> I know I was one of the people bad. that voted for Heathen. I thought that was a cool name. I honestly, yeah, I, I, don't know I, I love the vulgar, vulgar display truck. Uh, but it made sense. You kind of sold the truck with the name on it. It made sense to evolve into something else. Right. And uh, new truck. It's got, it's got to be. It can't be living out. I mean, that, it's almost like I it just had to. Change. It's a new truck with a different personality. It's got to have a different name. You know? Right. Now. It just didn't make sense to call it to call it vulgar 2.0 or something. You know? Right. I thought about just calling it vulgar or you know something little vulgar. I don't know, but what right. the, it didn't make sense. So he even if it's good, I think it'll be good. I, I like it. It's got I the like old, it. yeah. It's got the old 30, 30 style body on it. Is it just so gonna be, be just a cab like on, you uh, unveiled it originally there, or you got more? Tins? Yeah, that's little. It'll have a cab on it. I mean, I it's not completed fully yet, but. The doors won't be on it for a while. There's, a, I have other worries than that right now. Right. And the nose is a little bit short, but I'm getting that length and hopefully by Mudfest and get that on there. But cool. I'm more worried about the mechanical end right now than anything else. I want to make sure that it, uh, you know, that it, that it runs and and works like it's supposed to. There's, you know, there's shock adjustments and what gearing and oh, you know sure. just all the stuff that I have to do. What what tune works best? You know, is all my is all my stuff adjusted right and you know the alignment and i got a lot of stuff yet to do before mudfest but i'm getting headers put on this next week i'm, I'm bringing it over to uh, uh a guy up in by fargo he does he does headers uh, zoomies stainless okay. zoomies this guy's awesome gp headers i don't know if you've ever heard of him before but he did vulgar's headers too he's just amazing the work is amazing so but <laughs> Do you have somebody else coming on tonight or what? Am I going over my time here? Oh, you're good yet. I don't even see Kevin here. Um, before we do cut out, where do you plan on bringing this thing? Like, you got to have some sort of a schedule in, in mind anyway, right? I do. Uh, I mean, my plan is that I'm going to follow Built to Beat this year as much as I can, at least if, if you know, God, you know, whatever they, whatever is allowed, you know, if stuff breaks and I can't get it fixed quick enough, I might have to miss a race, but. I right. plan on going to all the built to beat races, so I will. But I, and I'm also going to do Mudfest. Uh, I'll be debuting that weekend at, you know, Mudfest. I probably did the a Memorial weekend. I'll be there for the drag races on Friday night. Um, 
and then I'll race the mega truck event. It's at 11 o'clock on Saturday. That'll probably be done by, I imagine one or two. And then, um, we're going to load up and go over to Mavericks over in Baroon, East Baroon. Yeah. You know, over at, over at Nick and John's and Paul's bar. Yeah. Uh, you all know what Mavericks is, but we're going to go yeah. there for, for their afternoon event. And, uh, if all, if all goes well, we'll be racing Sunday there as well. You know, um, nice. I know there's been some conflict. Some people have been talking about all that stuff, but I'm good friends with both people and I want to be able to support both of them. And I think it's just great that there's two places to race in one day. Why not? <laughs> you know, right. all the better. It sucks having to move everything sometimes, but you know, well, we actually got invited. Uh, we got invited originally to go to Mudfest. Um, right. Then I talked with Ty a couple days after that. Sure, and sure. we got invited to come and do the video for his race too. So we're splitting up. We got four guys. We're going to be in both places. I'm going to get video of everything I possibly can, pictures of everything I possibly can, and interviews with all you guys that have them big, crazy trucks. So right. I'm pretty pumped for that weekend too. And, and like you said, I, I'm friends with everybody. Um, we're all kind of a big mud family. There's no reason why we can't... Uh, we can't all work that out and and be in both places, you know. No, I know, and there's like I said, hopefully that some of the guys that said they're not going to come do change their mind and they'll end up coming. But I don't know. Some people are stubborn too, so we'll see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't but whatever. It is what it is. Stubborn. Yeah, it'll 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 be good no matter what happens. So, and for me, it's going to be more test and tune day anyway. So I'll just be getting a feel for things and. I mean, I'll be giving it, but hopefully it goes as well as I, I, I hope it will. So, but anyways, that's that. And then I don't know what I'll do the rest of the built to beat stuff. You know, I don't know any out of state events this year, what I'll do, depending how the truck performs and, you know, if it's worthwhile to take it elsewhere, you know, I, I might have to make major changes to it. Who knows? So right. if I have to add shocks or, you know, who knows what all it may have to, may have to do or not do a change chassis stuff or whatever, but. So we expect to see you in June at Benson Bog Days. I plan on being at Benson and in, in definitely in June. That's one that I like to get to. They got a great okay. track. I mean, Ty's done. I really like Ty's tracks. You know, I've been uh, I've been involved in the beginning with uh, Built to Beat. You know, we. I remember the first um, event he had at, uh, you know, in his Cambridge house in Cambridge. We copied the track from, from the Dirty Mudder Truckers. Uh, you know, that we followed there. I measured that track that day down there with a, with a measuring wheel, and I used those dimensions to to build uh, ties. You know, I, um, you know, I, I didn't do it myself personally, but I gave him the guidance, you know, to help him, and he copied that track pretty much almost identical. It was actually a little bigger, which was kind of better. So, I like big tracks like that where you just, you know, you have all the room to, to get these big motors opened up, you know, and uh, heck yeah, that's when it's fun when you can just pin it and stay in it, you know. And it we makes a spectacle for the crowd too. I mean, that's you know because it's it's freaking wild. Like last year, at, last year at Mavericks in the Memorial, when all them everybody showed up there for built to be, you know, all the Michigan boys and fuck, that was exciting. You know, what I mean, I didn't have a truck okay. that day, but I'm like, I want to be part of this, man. This was it was crazy, and people were competitive. They were not letting up, and it was just I'm surprised there wasn't more uh, more more. Uh, uh, carnage than there was there really wasn't hardly any but uh, thankfully there wasn't but i was just like these guys are getting after it and they're getting freaking wild you know but, okay. uh, yeah it was awesome so but I, I plan on being at benson and i plan on doing all the all the stuff i can do you know cool i'm sure we're going to see you around the summer then that's going to be awesome i can't wait to yeah. see that truck in person that heathen truck is going to be badass to watch <laughs> yeah i mean i have high hopes hopefully it hopefully it does what it's supposed to do it's been a long time of waiting for that thing to get uh to where it's at now so i drove it that first day and i'll tell you it was it was a little bit i don't know it felt a little like vulgar kind of a just smaller i'm like okay well i can't judge it too much i only drove it in my front driveway for two little back and forth passes so but it you know it wasn't a whole lot different than vulgar it seemed like but i guess I, that wasn't in a dirt or on a track either so i guess we'll see it's got to be faster you think a little bit at least so yeah you think so <laughs> Let's back to that power to weight ratio thing. Yeah, right. You know, that's that was uh that alone should 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 change things a little bit. So but right on. I'm actually about to go in my garage and continue to work on it. I got a couple of things more to do tonight on it. So I don't know if you're uh 
trying to close this thing up. You got your other guy ready to go yet or no? Yep, I got my other guy on deck here. Uh, before we get off of here, anybody you want to give a special shout out to with the new truck? Uh, anybody that helped you along in the way? Uh, I mean, sponsors, you, anything like that? The list would be <laughs> ultimately long to tell every name that was involved in there. But I mean, clearly, you know, Chris was my guy that was the main fabricator and, you know, and just a close friend of mine and nothing but respect for the guy. Uh, I mean, Dustin Romaker was a huge help. And I'm going to forget names and I'm going to get pissed at myself for this later. But I mean, Dustin was, Dustin has evolved to become just like, you know, a mentor to so many people oh, yeah. um, in general. When I, when I call him, he always answers and he always has some feedback that I can use, you know, that kind of thing. And he's always, he's always, he's always done whatever I'm trying to do. He's already done it before. And he has, he has the variables that I need to look at and just the advice and, and if I need parts, he's got them. He's got fabricated parts or he's got connections. And, you know, and then my engine builder, Dwayne, um, Dwayne Corrigan from, you know, he's up from uh, up by St. Cloud there. But, I mean, hands down, the best engine builder I've ever used. And I've used a lot of them, you know. And there's other guys out there that are obviously clearly very good, very good builders. You know, the Nick Nasties of the world. And, you know, I mean, he's awesome. And, you know, you kind of choose a guy and stick with him for the most part. But, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for my engine builder. He's put together this motor and all the motors he's done for me have just been, you know, I wouldn't say bulletproof, but you know, as much as a blower motor can be, right you know, on. and then from there, the list just goes on. I mean, you go from the guys that built the axles to SCS to the guys that cut the tires, you know, fab, you know, fab 57 and just all the event promoters, you know, it's just awesome. You know, the Jake's and the John Madison's and, you know, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the Nate Benson's and the list goes on. I mean, these guys are all, I, I feel lucky to be part of, to be, you know, honestly, this, this a bigger part of the sport where there's so much effort, uh, you know, with all these different people that we all, we all live and breathe these things, you know, and it's just, it's awesome to be part of it. You know, I, I, uh, I appreciate all that goes into the, to making this sport a success, you know, and the things that keep it exciting and, and interesting and, you know, moving into a forward direction, you know, evolving it. And uh, I, I like to be on the, on the, on the, on the front of that with everybody else, you know, okay. being that cutting edge, you know, trying to, trying to learn new stuff and try new stuff. And it's cool to see it all, you know, it is. but yeah, that's, you know, I guess that's kind of my, that's where I'm at with things. So. Heck yeah. But yeah. Well, thanks a lot for being on here with me tonight. Um, no problem. Brother. Uh Hopefully, I run into you at one of the two, either at Mudfest or over at Mavericks. We'll get a little interview with you, get a walk around in that truck, and and uh, we'll go from there. All right, dude. Well, good talking to you. And if you ever want me in again, let me know. We'll Heck yeah. Have another easy conversation. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, All Mike. Right, brother. Make it easy. Yep. Yeah, bye now. All right. One second here. I'll get this set up. I already got Kev in here. So we're gonna go side by side. Two. Boop, boop. And done. Kevin Baumgartner, can you hear me? Oh, you're muting. I can hear you. There we go. There we go. I had to have you on mute while we were talking to Mike. Otherwise, we'd have all been talking together. Right. Exactly. So, um, let's see. Let's get right into it. We kind of ran long-winded with Mike. Uh, I want to start out by saying this guy right here, for everybody that's watching, he has been involved in motorsports his whole entire life. And I'm going to let him babble about where he started what he's done, what he thought of it, and where he's going. And uh, if we run long-winded, we're good buddies. Um, just stay tuned because it's going to be awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, so I mean, you... real, realistically, I mean, it started a long time ago just from my dad. So, <laughs> I mean, when I was, I mean, probably five, six years old watching him build Buicks and Cadillacs for demolition derby and you know my dad had stock car time even before me you know so 
kind of just growing up being around that and you know remember hours and hours of making laps in a church parking lot in a go-kart till i got the laps right you know okay. i mean ran that thing out of gas every night after school and all summer long and you know and i'm sure that's where a lot of the racing came into it of be out there until you get it perfect and yeah so that's that's kind of where that started but i mean i really didn't get into uh i think I, my first derby due to you know you had to have parent signatures and all that was right. 15 yeah the grand rapids speedway you know okay. and i mean pretty much from that point on i don't remember a year of not doing demolition derbies for several years and then you know i i did pretty well in them and i remember the one night the mm -hmm. promoter i went out and i won the feature in the derby car and then they had a kind of like last chance run what you brung come out there and i went out there and won that and the guy goes well he goes you know you ought to just you ought to just build a race car and come race tomorrow night at the enduro because it was fair time you know yeah and i thought you know what maybe maybe next year i'll do that well there was a buddy of mine that had a impala in it and i think he made one hit knocked the starter out of it <laughs> and i kind of gave him a bunch of crap about not making it very long so i was like what are you going to do with that impala just junk it or what and he goes well, i don't care a couple hundred bucks that thing's yours so i drug it home and we put a motor together and that ended up becoming a pretty famous uh, enduro car for years and years and years. I mean, that was uh, that thing had tons of wins on it. I mean, okay. several times over. And uh, I think uh, my altercation with Sloan finally ended its life. Yeah. And uh, we've become pretty good buddies after after that. But uh, let's let's stop right there the altercation i've i've heard it from sloan um i know we've talked about it a little bit but most of the people that are on here probably don't realize that you and sloan actually enduroed together for quite a while and you didn't start out um let's say too friendly so no. your side of it sloan said you hit him really hard and he cried to everybody and and uh you didn't care you were just out there racing yeah i mean uh you know, it, it kind of started out, you know, I was out there not to really do a lot of hitting, you know, because I, to fund the fun of derbying and enduroing and stuff, because I was still doing both of them at the time, was I was like, well, you know, I'm winning four or $500 in these demos and man, I can win a thousand in these enduros. And I was right. just, I mean, I was doing really well cleaning up on them, you know, so, and, uh, little bit of hitting started you know and it was fine i mean back then we'd start with 60 cars and end with five six of them at the end of it i mean they'd all right. just get absolutely destroyed and uh there was uh, a couple of my couple of my buddies at the time were a little more on social media than i was and there was uh some talk of uh people upset about my car about you know running a race engine in it or what have you and you know i didn't have you know it was just a an old small block 350 and i mean i i mean i built it up from just stock but i mean it was a good motor sure. and uh there was a comment by sloan and i'm sure he'll remember it where he said that you know these guys are out there running these mad cams in these <laughs> motors you know, and, and i kind of just laughed at it and made a joke about it and you know, one of the guys, he's like, you know, that that Sloan, he's still he's still mad about you out there with this cheating car. And, you know, everyone's going to, you know, a little mad about it. And I was like, well, I'll fix it. You know, next time we go out, I'm I'm going after him a little bit, you know, I'm kind of shut him up a little bit. Sure. So and that started about a, I'd say, 
three or four enduro battle between the two of us of going out and trying to junkie, you know, junk each other's stuff. Yeah. And uh, that's where, you know, I, in the midst of that, I actually started stock car racing. And so I was getting my full racing in Thursdays, Saturdays, Sundays. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to drag that old enduro car out and I'm done racing. I'm not even bringing a lap counter. I'm doing, I'm going out there and I'm going to dunk every single car out there. And uh, that's where it went from being painted the 72 race car to the DQ me black car. <laughs> right on. And, uh, and then the real hitting and, you know, and yeah, and, and that, it, it just started over a little internet beef of kind of little trash talk. And then it was like, you know what, you know, I've been building derby cars and I'm crazy enough and let's do it. You know, let's go out and let's, let's put some stuff on trailers, you know, at the end of the night. So it's, uh, and then, and then after that, I think the last one was pretty big. You know, I kind of got the better of him in a little deal and he left his, his car. I I'm guessing wouldn't run no more. And it was kind of still parked out on the track. I went in and changed the flat tire and come back out and I hit that thing wide open, just parked on the track, just to, just to <laughs> wreck his car and in the process wreck mine. But I think it was like the last little stamp on our uh, beef. And then after that, it's been great. I mean, Sloan's a great guy and we've had good conversations and, and everything. It's kind of dumb to waste the time that we did over some BS really, but it, right. uh, it's a cool story, I guess, after all of it's said and done. Yeah, I honestly, uh, I hadn't heard that backstory until I think it was when when he came out to do some filming at Benson's. And he's like, I used to just hate Kev. And I'm like, why? You know, you guys are should be good. You're the same kind of guy, you know. And then he, then he told me that you whooped him a couple times and he kind of... <laughs> He kind of went home and licked his wounds and then you whooped him a couple more times. <laughs> well, then not, he got a little revenge well, and sounds right, like it ended not, both of you. Not quite a, a hundred percent fair fight. You know, he was building uh, the Hondas and stuff like that. And I was still running that big body at Impala. And, you know, once that track dried out some, it was pretty tough to get away from that big car, you know, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it weight helps you out a lot and that, in that you know so sure it was it was still fun and i think uh you know realistically the to me that enduro you know it was such a blast back then and boy did it put a lot of fans in the stands and and i realized that you know there was a reason why we only did it once or twice a year because you can't build 70 cars every time and just junk them all you know and that's how it right. used to be we would have the one fair enduro there'd be 70, 80, hundred cars and there wouldn't be anything left afterwards, you know? So, you know, you guys trying to put on three, four of them a uh, summer, it definitely gets to the point where you guys got to do a little more racing than hitting because otherwise, you know, can't afford to keep building cars over and over and, and run out of time and all that. But, you know, the hitting and the crashing and the, you know, maybe the backstory of the beefs between people, because I guarantee you there was people out there when they seen Sloan chasing me or me chasing him, you know, all eyes are on those two cars, just hoping we'd get close enough to each other on the track, you know, and right I think that's what really got people excited to go back out there, you know, and uh, I don't know, I, to a certain extent, uh, you get, I think if you want to watch racing, show up Thursday night and watch some bad fast race cars yep. do some good racing you know um when it comes to the enduro stuff i mean i know everyone's out there having fun and and you know want to get as much fun out of a car before it goes to the junkyard but i think everyone likes to watch kind of a a big giant circle uh, demolition derby is right. you know people want to see the destruction and and the crashing and stuff like that so i think uh when they just get going single file and no one's spinning no one out and no one's doing nothing it's just like uh, a bunch of slow race cars <laughs> right it looks you know so you did some ice racing too correct yeah for i'd say for 
solid four four or five winters we did and actually me and uh my dad and i actually uh got the deer river the white oak ice racing going and we did that for a few winters and uh you know we travel over and uh go to the garfield lake and laporte and race over there that's kind of where we got it all started and i mean that was man that was back in junior senior year of high school we were doing that you know and boy the those cars have changed so much i mean we used to just you you know that was a benefit of being a big guy then and having big guy friends because you'd pack every guy <laughs> you could in the cars and load i mean i had a uh a caprice i was running and i think at at one point we had two disassembled small blocks in the trunk of it for weight because <laughs> you know guys other we think we couldn't afford buying lead and stuff like that so we'd just find anything that was heavy around the shop and you just start throwing it in the trunk and then you find all the biggest people you could to throw in the car and and go out there and now now i look and watch them and man the cars are lifting the tires off the ice and you know they got full you know roll cages in them and all yeah. that and i mean they're they're nuts they're they're fast cars and they're nothing uh, uh close to where i was back then but it's it was definitely a fun experience i'd say those years of driving on that ice has that really helped me out so much of all these northern tracks for dirt track racing man when they dry slick right off i mean it is it's just like driving on ice. I mean, you had throttle sure. management the whole time and, and uh, I mean, just feeling the car waiting for it to step out on you and, and uh, the ice racing definitely, I mean, the whole time that car, just a little, little movement of the throttle and you're going around. So that was definitely a fun experience. I mean, yeah, I would say over the years, I mean, pretty much anything with cars and trucks I've tried to do and been, you know, luckily, pretty successful at most of them you know but yeah, I, you got quite a few trophies behind you there bud <laughs> yeah i kind of picked through to find a couple that really meant a lot to me and uh i i couldn't possibly this all the years of racing I, i've definitely been lucky enough to accumulate quite a few of them so it's been you know and it's crazy to think that a couple of these maybe 50 dollar pieces of plastic is what you spend thousands and thousands of dollars chasing but, but later on when you sit back and look at them and boy it just brings back that whole night you know you can remember just about everything of getting that one trophy i mean it's a uh, pretty pretty cool memories heck yeah so let's go let's move on to the dirt track um you cut your teeth in a pure stock correct yep that's where you know we started out i I actually, the one summer I ended up clean sweeping all the enduro races. I won them all. And the last one I won, the guy goes, you know, you're, I feel like you're wasting your time out here, man. You're putting good laps down. He goes, you ought to just buy a, a damn race car and come out here, you know, and race Thursday nights. And I kind of just strudge it off thinking, you know, I've always said, I mean, from the time I could drive to the racetrack i mean i've watched dirt track racing growing up and and watch those guys go around and thinking man that's i'll never get into a car like that that's way too much money and whatever and well, i started looking around after that and took my winnings from those enduro races and bought my first pier stock which was a two-door buick which was about eight feet longer than any pier stock you see running around the track. Now the thing was huge. I mean, the only benefit that slow piece of iron had was no one could get around it because it would take up from the tires to the trees if it was a little bit sideways. So, you know, that, and I mean, at that point we were still guys I was racing with. I mean, people were hardly even buying tires. I mean, we were going to the junkyard and trying to find the right size with a lot of tread on it. You know, and that was what we were doing. And pretty soon, guys are starting to buy these Cooper Cobras. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, maybe we got to start buying tires to compete. And then it's like, well, let's build a G-body. You know, let's lighten this up a little bit. And boy, did it really progress over my years of that. I mean, the car that I have now as a pure stock would probably 
I'd probably could lap it twice in a heat race compared to the car I started in. You know, yeah. pier stocks have gotten just unbelievably faster. And, you know, we were on the Hoosiers and, you know, people are spending pretty big money on these 305 motors. I mean, I mean, the motor I started with, I just pulled out of a, out of a Caprice, a 305 in it. And we put some valve springs in it because the thing smoked so bad. And we thought, well, we may as well try something on this thing to get it to turn some RPMs out there. And, you know, you're talking 180 horsepower when it was brand new. Right. Well, I mean, these beer stocks now are easily probably pushing that 300 mark, you know, which is just unreal out of that 305 with the way the rules are, you know, based to build these motors. So, sure. <clears throat> and that, that kind of progressed and. I won quite a few races, won some track championships and, you know, guys were kind of hounding me to move up and do something else. And I, you know, I ended up racing a super for a while and, uh, you know, we found some success there. We won a couple races and uh, a couple rookies of the year with it. And, um, it just got to the point where my competitiveness got the best of me and the guys I'm racing against who are putting on four brand new tires every night we're going out there and spending big money on shocks and new motors. And, and I just looked at the amount of money and I just kind of was like, no, nah, you know what? I'll keep hanging out with the peer stocks and, and do that. I mean, I want to race that super and, and run it hard, but I mean, it, it definitely takes, it takes uh, financial backing to sure. be super competitive with that kind of car. So. Sure. Then we might as well move on to uh, when did you get into mud? <laughs> well, I actually, you know, me and Nate Benson talk about it on and off all the time and kind of chuckle and laugh about it because, you know, the first time I ever went to that mud bog, I think I was probably, boy, 16, 17 years old. And I had a 76 Ford. And I drove it. It was my daily driver to school. And, you know, and actually, uh, you know, everyone's like, you got to bring it out there, man. You got big tires on it. Take it out there. You do good, you know. And, you know, we went out there and and that was, you know, you know, we're talking now 16 years ago yeah. for that. So, I mean, that's pretty young in the Benson Bog days, you know. For that was really young, yeah, you know? for sure. That was early on. I mean, there was a lot of trees and not a very big uh, mud hole at the time. And we went out and had a blast. And I did it uh, the next following year with that same truck. And then kind of that's when I really got in uh, to the enduro and, and all that other type of motorsports racing. And I kind of left the truck just sit. And I don't know, a, a few years ago, um, uh, Nate actually started working for the same company I work for and we started talking again, started, you know, whatever. And I said, you know, I still got that old Ford sitting out there that I brought to your mud bog all those years ago. And he's like, well, fire it up, you know, bring it out there, have a good time. And I said, you know what? I, I, that wouldn't be too bad. So I, you know, drug it out of the weeds and got it fired up. And I think it spent more time going backwards out there because I lost, all forward gears and boy I, I i ended up breaking the front stub shaft before the bog really even got going i think i broke it friday like in the morning and i ended up welding the stub shaft right to the axle housing so i could have three wheel drive at least <laughs> i did that then i had a ratchet strap around the transfer case the shifter because it kept popping out of gear so i had that ratchet strap to the cab so it stopped popping out and took it out and kept going pretty soon i lost you know second gear then i lost first gear and then pretty soon i'm like well i might as well just finish it off and it just kept going backwards till a reverse finally gave up and you know and then you know we kind of talked about it and nate goes you know i got i know a guy who's got a s10 you know on a blazer frame and he goes, you ought to go take a look at it. It's a good deal, you know. And 
Well, it, I mean, pretty much stepped in it there. I mean, once right. I bought that truck, now I'm pretty hooked. So, and that thing, you know, switch engines, switch transmissions, switch transfer. I mean, I think I, I think I might've had a hundred yards on the truck <laughs> from when I bought it before I completely gutted the thing out, you know, went through the differentials and different engine, different tranny, different transfer case. And, you know, kind of battled some problems on and off last year with just all the new components on it. But I mean, it's nothing too fancy and it, uh, but it's definitely a fun truck to go out and do some bog and it needs a little less leaf springs in it because it's pretty much about solid. I think there's 12, le 12 leaf springs in the rear of that truck. So yeah, she's pretty rigid. <laughs> Yeah, you you bounce around in the thing pretty bad. I mean, you take a beating driving that truck around, and so hopefully get after it here and maybe soften up the suspension and start working on it. And right on. <clears throat> so all in all, uh, what's your favorite motorsport to do? Boy, you know it's that's a that's a really you know that's a really tough deal to answer that because. You know, each and every single one of them kind of hold a special place in my heart. You know, I I love the mud, uh, kind of the just throw it together. If your mind can think of it, do it, you know, weld this, cut that, whatever you want to do and just go out there and have a great time and, you know, hold down on that skiddy pedal as long as you want and, and uh, you know, one thing across all motorsports, whether it's derby, enduro, ice racing, mud, dirt track, I mean, there's a family in every single one of them. I mean, gr Absolutely. great groups of people. I mean, everyone, you know, willing to lend a hand and help you out and borrow you parts and, you know, and all that. And, you know, you turn around and, you know, the, the dirt track, I mean, the competition is so fierce and i mean i've become such great friends with a bunch of the people that i race against on a daily basis out there and it's just like you know you got me this time i'm coming for you next week you know and and with that competition also comes great satisfactory when you satisfaction when you win you know sure. it's not just a given deal you know it's not like oh if i spend this much or or buy all this new stuff, I'm going to win every time, you know, there's other people doing the same thing. So when you get a chance to go out there and you win, you know, you win a big event or even your night, you know, your regular racing nights. I mean, it's hard to get wins around this Northland area because there is tons of very good cars that race. So I think the competition wise, you know, even though how stressful trying to get everything, Thing and everything right and and trying to figure it out the you know the glory and winning is so great you know sure. so it, it's really fun that way and then you turn around for you know the demolition derby and and enduro you know the demo stuff is like you get to look back and see what you created and see you know i love i love building something and then just destroying it to see what I could do better the next time to make it better, make it faster or make it stronger. So it's like, you get to learn every time you do it. And, and I mean, realistically, you talk to most guys that do stuff like this and they're all going to say that, you know, even if they dirt track race, they always wish they could just, you know, run into somebody or blast them, you know, now in Derby, you get to do that in Duro, you get to do that. You know, you get to take out that frustration of a guy, kind of puts a big slider on you in the enduro the next corner you can just push them right off the track you know right on and uh, the derby stuff i mean get to go out take out all that frustration all those late nights working on that car you know all that time away from your family you get to go out and just just beat the tar out of it and and it's fun i mean it's a it, every one of those motorsports just has such a such a great feeling in, in a different way for me and that's what's caused me to kind of move on just like your last podcast where it says you you start doing something and once you start kind of losing a little interest it starts losing its lack of luster and and all of a sudden you jump into something else and all that passion of racing and and competition and and stuff all comes back to you and it's something different you know no i agree 100 percent. i uh 
I dabbled in a, quite a few things. I, I've junked a couple in a derby. I've junked quite a few in enduro. Um, on accident, junked a race car or two. And God, I don't even know what I've wrecked for mud trucks. Um, seems like I just kind of wreck everything. But I have fun doing every different motorsport that I've ever done. Um, I enjoy watching all this stuff. Uh, I'm dabbling in getting back into a couple of things. So my next question for you is, is it just a mud truck thing now? Or, you know, we got this brand new derby coming back. Uh, really good promoter coming to Grand Rapids track uh, over the fair. Can we maybe see Kev in a derby car again? <laughs> Well, I'm usually, I think anybody who's ever raced against me knows that I usually like to leave stuff kind of open-ended and, and maybe leave everybody hanging on everything. Uh, whether I show up, you might see that, you know, that big white race trailer pull into a dirt track, or you might see the open <laughs> trailer with the derby car or enduro car. But I mean, uh, I mean, maybe to answer your question, you know, there's a, there's a W body sitting out back already built. Huh. There's a enduro car already built. There's an ice racer that's sitting out there. Actually a couple ice racers sitting out there. There's a super stock, a pure stock already loaded in the trailer. And uh, maybe one day I'll go pick my mud truck up from Nate's. He's been <laughs> storing it for me all winter, but uh, I mean, it kind of just, you know, and for me, it, sometimes it comes down to just a week before the event, you know, me and, and I think sometimes my wife is the one that sometimes pushes me a little bit on it. I'll be like, I don't know. I don't know. And she goes, all right, if you can get that car ready by Friday night, we're going to the enduro. And I'll be like, well, bring the pizza to the garage. I got a couple nights to go here, you know, and, and, and build cars. I mean, and I've done it time and time again, build a derby car in two nights, put together, you know, swap engines on the enduro car and, and, and be still wrenching on it when we show up at the track. And sometimes it's that last minute push just to see if I could get it done in time or not. But I mean, I got, I got plenty of cars sitting around. I, maybe if I get a little wild hair up my ass, you might see more than a couple of them this summer. So heck yeah, that'd be cool. So last year, September Fest, uh, you wrenched on your mud truck all weekend. You got it right. You never gave up. And you got yourself a belt. Tell me yeah. about that experience. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, with, you know, I, I, you know, my wife and I really took a big part in uh, helping out at the Benson Bog days, you know, on the staff part of it. Yep. Uh, Nate and Mandy are such great friends of ours and stuff. So we didn't get to really run the truck much that weekend. You know, I ran it a little bit and broke it and, and ran, I fixed it and ran a little more, but September fest was really when we were going to take it out and really hammer on the truck, you know, and I had a few problems. I think we lost a fuel pump and broke a leaf spring and broke the steering box, but caught it on fire. I think the starter, turn the motor over for a couple minutes while it was trying to melt the truck down there. And that was exciting, but you know, all in all, it was just, it was fun. I gave, you know, I had tons of kids riding around in the truck and, and, and going out. My wife got to drive the truck a bunch and she just loved it. And she did a great job. And, and, um, you know, winning the belt was just the cherry on top of, uh, uh, fun but frustrating we it seemed like every time i get the truck running good that the thing would break and then i'd bring it back in and thrash on it and thrash on it when everybody's kind of chilling out and you know fire going and i'm over there wrenching on it and driving up town to get parts and and i just didn't want to quit i think uh i think i ended up bringing 50 gallons of race fuel that weekend and i went through all of it nice so i mean it was uh well worth it. We had a lot of fun. And, and, uh, I know, uh, Nate and Mandy asked me to do this, but there's my September fest belt. That's pretty sweet. And they, uh, we're talking that sounds like there's going to be a couple more belts up for grabs at 
Benson Bog days this year. There is. So that'll be, I'm sure they probably chatted with it. I know you had him on the podcast uh, a couple Last weeks week, ago yeah. or a week ago. Yeah. So, but I mean, those things, that belt is awesome. I mean, that thing is like just shy. I mean, it's got to be like the WWE belts. I mean, the things, it feels like it weighs 20 pounds, made out of metal, good snaps, but uh, you know, kind of yeah, wore it around. 16.3 pounds. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yep. It's, I mean, it's a, it's definitely, you know, I look around, I got uh, lots of different awards and trophies over the years, and I love the unique ones, you know, the, the ones that are, you know, I got a couple behind me that are made out of uh, steel and they're kind of little one-off ones. They're not just the store-bought ones. And I think the belt is just such a cool, something different, something, you know, you don't just, you don't get that at pretty much anywhere else. So, right. I mean, what a, what an amazing uh, award and, uh, to win. So it was definitely a fun weekend. It was, uh, it was interesting throughout to keep that truck together and, and uh, running. So I actually, uh, <clears throat> I sponsored that, that belt last year. And uh, together with Sloan, um, Dorholt Fence and High Octane are going to do the King of the Pit belt again for June. Um, and then they have a new freestyle event. And there's a belt that we haven't uh, really spoke of yet. But that one's, uh, that one's probably in the mail. So I don't know how long we'll run with the belt idea. I know when I first told Mandy that I saw these belts and I had to have one, she was like, fine, buy one. And then once everybody saw it, I think the idea stuck now. So I think it's well, cool. It's, well, like I said, you know, there's lots of different places. I, You know, years ago, you didn't see a lot of one-off trophies, you know, and then it kind of – I seen it starting to come in at, in the in the derby world. You know, there was a lot of, you know – handcrafted welded together trophies and stuff and then sure. you know with this belt i mean these guys travel you know the guys that are going to be trying to race for these belts and 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 bog for these belts and stuff like that i mean all in all what a cool addition to hang on your wall next to you know some of the plaques you win i mean you go you know especially if you race a uh the same series over and over you know you get right. kind of the same stuff uh and it, i mean each one means something and each one's a cool trophy. I mean, I got uh, plenty of them, but at the same time, when you get those, you know, those really unique ones, you know, it, that's something cool to hang up and, and, and admire and, and, and have. So that's definitely something cool. And I, I appreciate that so much that you were, you know, that you donated that for that September fest. And, you know, it was, uh, it was something cool for sure. Well, now we get to be the judges. Um, I'm going to be around on Friday and Saturday for the mud bog. Uh, Sunday, I got a derby to go cover. But um, as staff, we get to uh, voice our opinions on where them belts go. So right. that's definitely going to be a, a, a fun part of our uh, yet another responsibility we have as staff there. It'll be the fun yeah, part. Yeah, I mean, um, there's so much that goes on. You know, and the years that I went to the bog beforehand and you see the people ri riding around with the staff shirts and stuff and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then now, you know, last year we were part of that and both me and my wife just said, wow, is there so much stuff? You know, you're constantly radios on, go yeah. help this guy, go help that guy. That generator's not running, that water pump's not going, go put gas in the, you know, just steady and then right as soon as you think you're almost caught up they're like hey racing event starts in a half an hour let's make sure the trucks are getting over there and get people signed up or whatever and and then at the same time you know hopefully there's it's such a great group of people i mean it's truly just a family it and really is. you know to sit out there and i mean we definitely you know there's times that you hear a truck fire up and start heading for the pit and we kind of all just take a second to watch somebody go out there and hammer on it and, and put on a show. Cause I mean, that's what we're all there for too. You know, we want to watch it just as much as everybody else does, but you know, we got, we want to see this event that Nate and uh, Mandy are 
you know, putting together and putting on every year and, and we want to see it succeed. And that's where the staff part where you kind of got to take a step back from just getting to enjoy every aspect of it. And, but I think judging the trucks will be cool because you can always hear somebody go, Oh man, you know, boy, that, that, that one old square body Chevy has been out there all day. I mean, he's got to be out of gas by now. He's been, you know, not letting up on it. And, you know, it's, it's cool. The King of the pit belt is, it's such a cool deal. You know, a guy shows up early in the weekend and just stays on it out there, just beating on his stuff. And, and I'm sure thrashing on it to keep it going. And, and uh, I mean, we get to watch that. You drive through the pits and you see guys that you, you see other trucks, they break and they just kind of push them off to the side and decide it's time to drink beer and hang out. And then you see other guys that are, I mean, they're just, you know, just thrashing on it, just doing everything, borrowing welders, asking for generators. Anybody got a, got this, got that and, and making it work. And that's the guy that really deserves that belt. That guy that shows up still wants to have a good time, but wants to put, as much time on that truck as he can that no weekend, absolutely you know. i i agree with that 100 percent. when we started talking about the king of the pit i'm like this is the guy in my mind that no matter what adversity that he has in front of him he still goes out there and gives it that one last run and i got to uh kind of be the only judge i guess at september fest and that was actually a really hard decision for me um watching you and what you went through that whole weekend and burning all the fuel out of it, taking everybody for a ride, just, you know, being part of that environment from the day we all got there until there weren't no gas left in her, you know, right, um, right. that's what made my decision for that one. I think it's going to be fun to have our whole crew, our whole mud family, uh, bounce the ideas off each other. Yeah, I saw so and so out there nineteen times. Right. You know. Yep. Um. Oh, ab absolutely. That that guy to me, that guy who I seen standing around the you know the Friday night fire, you know, whatever, and 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 then all of a sudden in the morning when I'm having some coffee and getting ready for it, I hear a truck fire up and it's already. It's like man, it's only pit's been open five minutes and that guy's ready to go out there and start that 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 early morning guy to me who was out giving her hell the night before all the way and yep. till midnight or beyond. And then pretty soon he's, he's back ready. You know, he's there to mud and he's there to have a good time and, and, and spend as much time out there. I mean, that's, you know, that's a big, big part for me and put on a show. I mean, that's what these people are paying to go there and, and do, you know, they, they want to watch that guy go out there and hold the thing right to the floor and, who cares if you get stuck? Who cares if you, you don't got to have a truck on big tractor tires and, and, and a thousand horsepower to win that award. I right, mean, you could exactly. have, you know, 40, you know, you could have a Jeep that's just giving her on 31s, but never, never letting off all weekend long on that thing. You know, if we, if every time I turn and look at the pit and I see that same damn truck out there still just trying everything he can, I mean, whether it's a, above a daily driver to uh, one of these huge mega trucks. If he's out there trying to, you know, and put on a big show. And I know for those bigger trucks, it's expensive. I mean, the parts are expensive engines and, and fuel and all that. But I mean, there's lots of guys that are running, you know, four or 500 horsepower on 40 inch tires and, and nothing too crazy, nothing, you know, you could do that, get an old Ford, old Chevy square body, something like that. And just, go out there and just, just give it all weekend. And I mean, you'll have an opportunity to win that belt. So don't just be thinking just cause you don't have a 70, you know, $50,000 mud truck or $20,000 mud truck. You can't win that. Cause I'm, I'm telling you my vote would go right towards that guy who, like I said, every time I look at that pit, if that, if that same Jeep's out there giving it or S 10 or whatever, and just having a ball and, you know, buddies and everybody's just making good memories. I mean, to me, that's that's the guy that I think is really I mean, yeah, there's trucks that can make it through every single spot of that thing and, you know, make it through Wes's mess. And that's cool and all. And uh, it's great. But I guess where where I'm at when it comes to mud and where I came from is, you know, definitely there's just kind of the average guy, the guy who uh, 
who you know might only have a four or five thousand dollar you know truck put together or whatever or even less than that and he's wow. just just having a great time having a great weekend so well that's what we're trying to bring everybody together for the race is awesome those guys are big boys they've definitely got some really cool really expensive equipment um we love seeing that that's awesome that puts a great show on for the fans um butts in the seats matter you know we got to keep people entertained um the freestyle this year that's going to be cool uh that's something new for for benson bog days um really looking forward to seeing how that goes down but the king of the pit to me is anybody from that 500 hundred dollar beater that he bought some tires for and went out there and he smiled all weekend he broke it he fixed it maybe he didn't have to fix it all weekend long but that to me that tenacious guy that came for mud for the all three days right that guy should be a king at some point right well i mean i think yeah uh, i mean when when you talk about that and i mean i love the big high horse i mean i go watch sprint cars and late models and all that and then turn around and and uh and it's awesome it's fun to watch those big trucks you know you know and watch those those big mega trucks give it but at the same time um you know i i enjoy every bit like i said all the way from that 500 hundred dollar beater out there you can hear them just jumping the rev limiter over and over <laughs> and uh and and it's entertainment i mean you can look around at any anybody sitting in the stands and and they're all you know they they drove a you know early 2000 chevy there and then they see that same truck out there and there's a couple of you know, young, young bucks out there and they're just beating the tar out of that thing. And everyone's smiling and laughing and, ha you know, it's impressive to see those big trucks and everybody loves them. I mean, I love listening to them. I love those big motors and stuff, but I think at the same time is, uh, is everyone puts a smile on their face when they just see, I mean, anybody out there just having a great time in the mud and having a great time, just, just thrashing on stuff. So right on. So now everybody in the internet land, they probably already know where our two volts are going. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it doesn't mean nothing. I mean, if you got a big fancy truck and, and I mean, no, nothing against you. I mean, I got lots of money in those race cars and stuff. I mean, right. uh, if a guy's got a, a, a really, you know, nice truck and he's out there rotting on that thing all weekend, I mean, obviously he deserves it too. I mean, it does, sure. it's not, I'm not only going for the little guy, but I also want them guys that are looking at that, that old truck that they don't want to put tabs on to drive to work anymore. Cause they don't think it's worthy for the road, man, throw some tires on that thing, bring it out there, you know, end it, end it. Bass Brook recycling is not very far from there. So when you're done with right. it, you can just push it over there and be done with it. You know, come out and have a good time. And, and, you know, between that and, you know, you go look at trucks like uh, what I got and and uh, Josh Yule, you know, with Beast Mode and stuff and and Nate and Mandy. I mean, those aren't quite starter trucks. I mean, they're not your road. Tr I mean, they're they're built. They got axles under them. They got, you know, healthy engines in them, you know, and, you know, you see a guy out there giving it with that. I mean, everybody's like I said, everybody's yeah, has a chance in my book. I just like I said, want to see Every time I look out there, if I see you, you're getting my vote. I mean, whether right you're being able to make it through the deepest spot or not, I don't care. I mean, everyone's going to get stuck eventually, so just go. That's kind of the point time. in bogging, you know. You you test your abilities. I can make oh, it through yeah. that, but that's a little bit stickier. Let's try that. Yep. You yep. know, eventually yep. you got to get it stuck. Well, that's it, you know, and that's, <laughs> you know, you go and like. Uh, the first couple times that I, I took my truck out there, you know, I'm going around the edges cause I'm afraid of it breaking right in the worst spot to try to drag it out, you know? And then, uh, you know, your confidence keeps going and pretty soon you're going in a little bit farther and a little more messing around. And, uh, I mean, I found myself more than enough stuck, uh, several times last year, you right. know, I, yeah, you know, September fest, I tried Wes's mess in that, big heavy tank of mine just sunk right to the bottom of that thing but i mean it's still fun i mean if you if, you know i i just i think biggest part for me is is i know several people that got vehicles that are are 
have a chance to go out there and have a great time, but I think they all get it in their mind that if they don't have this big built truck on 44s and stuff that they can't have a good time, you know, you know, especially once that pit starts getting soupy and stuff by, you know, Saturday, I mean, you can just about drive a daily driver through some of it, you know, it's sure. deep. And I mean, you it probably will never drive the same after you bring it out of there. But I mean, you know, don't be afraid to come out. I mean, I, I love seeing every truck all the way from, you know, like that, uh, that Jeep that was at uh, September Fest, you know, all gutted right. out with just the roll cage on it. But man, the kid was just having a ball, you know, out there just thing was overheating. And that's the only time he seemed like he ever took a break was when it overheat so much it didn't have no power, you know, and then he just let it cool down. And boy, as soon as it fired back up, he was right back out there, you know. So that's, I mean, it definitely put a smile on my face listening to him out there holding that, that poor four liter right on the floor all day. But <laughs> it was a blast. <clears throat> well, I think we officially ran over. Um, looks like I've been on here for an hour and a half now. So. Let's uh, let's give you a chance to shout out to anybody you want to sponsors uh, in any of the other things that you've done over Motorsports World. Right. Um, anybody you want to thank? Yeah, well, first off, you know, I got to thank my wife big time for putting up with me with all this different racing and changing my mind. It seems like every few years of what <laughs> I want to dive into and building something different and um the encouragement i get from her and and stuff she just she loves all motorsports too which really makes this uh maybe a dangerous pairing when it comes to <laughs> my mindset for wanting to race and and her love for it too so i mean that is big you know my dad the moment i say i'm building anything with an engine that man's over here you know thrashing on my stock cars, thrashing on the enduro car, derby cars, mud truck. I mean, it, he's always been a huge part of it, you know, and then thank my mom for <laughs> allowing my dad to come over and, <laughs> and, and spend all those nights uh, messing around and, and uh, coming to all those races over all those years and, and stuff. And, you know, I got tons of really great friends in Bemidji through racing that have been there, through all of it we're still great friends and i'm sure we'll see them back at several racing events this summer and they come over and they supported me with uh they were all at the uh, benson bog days this year and got to ride in the truck and so you know there's just you know sponsor wise you know when i was dirt track racing i i got a few that that always hung on uh big for me um when it comes to that, you know, Williams Narrows Resort was always one that every single year I call them, they're more than willing to help me out and, and make my racing dreams kind of stick with it. I mean, I think they've been on every race car I've had since I was probably 18. So, um, other than that, uh, you know, definitely with this mud bogging and stuff, you know, Nate and Mandy have, put up with some shenanigans and, and, uh, help me out. I think, uh, I think, I've, uh, when Nate said the other night that his, uh, Chevy parts are depleting, I think I'm the factor in the depletion of, of all the Chevy <laughs> parts of, <laughs> of his yard, uh, between, uh, you know, learning so much from him, just, you know, this big mud stuff is so new to me. Um, and, him helping me along the way on stuff. And, uh, and then every time I turn around, he's like, well, you got to run this, you got to do that. And I go, well, where do I get that? He goes, swing by the house. I got one on the shelf or I got one out in the old Chevy out back, go grab it out of there, you know? And uh, it, it's just been, it's definitely made it easy to really jump into this thing head first and stuff. So those two are, such a big part of what I, you know, what I've done this last summer and stuff. So. Heck yeah. That's part of the mud family thing, you know? Um, it's not just the mud month we have where we're getting everything ready. It's not just the fun we have, uh, getting everybody involved in it, but it's the camaraderie that we have with our close knit group 
that's year long. You know, I ran into oh. a situation this year where I couldn't even drive in my driveway because the snow was too deep and uh, it was slushier than heck. And I, uh, I threw an SOS out on Facebook and your wife answers the call and says, Kev's on his way. And sure enough, you showed up, plowed me out and uh, I could get my fish house out of the yard and, and go fishing the next day. So it's, right. it's, it's not just the fact that we're all friends and that we all enjoy these motorsports. It's the people that we've met and the family and the community we've built around ourselves. You can ask them for dang near anything. And, oh, absolutely. And that, that means a lot. Yeah. I mean, these through, especially, you know, we've gotten such a, such a really lucky because with all the different motorsports we've done over the, over the years, all the different kind of racing families that were, uh, you know, intertwined with, you know, it's, uh, pick up the phone and, and pretty much anyone in the, you know, my entire favorites list, you could call <laughs> no matter what time of the day, uh, weekends, night, it doesn't, doesn't matter. And those people will drop whatever they got going on and they're coming to help you or, or, you know, run and grab you parts or, or what have you. I mean, it, it, it isn't even that it, it's just family stuff. Like you talk about, you know, plowing out your driveway or, Hey, can you, watch the kids quick. We got to, you know, we have something that's happening, you know, and it's such a, it's such a great feeling to have, you know, it's a family you choose to have and it's yep. a great, great group of people to have around. And, and they really, uh, they really mean so much to both me and my wife. And it's made motorsports just almost, we're almost unable to get away from it at this point because we just can't, you know, everybody's lives are so uh, tied up into, something we all love and enjoy, but now has become such a friendship. And so it works out really well. No, absolutely. Well, on that note, I think we're going to cut this one off. I know there's a wild game going on here real soon. It's probably going on right oh, yeah. now. <laughs> and uh, I kind of want to watch that. <laughs> yeah. No, I but it was you. great having you on, brother. Um, oh, absolutely. Until the next mud bog meeting or hopefully the frost is out of the ground soon i got a flagpole to put up for you still um, oh yeah we'll, we'll pick out a spot i think my wife's already got it already picked out from the perfect. night i plowed your driveway <laughs> nice right on well i'm gonna so, cut off of here i got a couple more words kev always great talking with awesome. you we could probably talk all night but oh yeah people will get bored at some point thanks yeah, a lot eventually. for being on bud yep thank you All right, that was uh, yet another mud uh, episode. Now, I don't know how many more of them I'm going to do, but I will put this out there right now. If, uh, if anybody in my mud family wants to come on a podcast with me, um, I'm going to have a couple more episodes here that I get to figure out. Um, we don't want to concentrate on one thing for too long. There's plenty of other motorsports we all enjoy and we all love uh i'm just planning a schedule here for i don't know a couple two three more weeks so uh if you're a buddy of mine no matter what motorsport you're in uh give me a shout here give me a shout on my personal facebook page call me um i'd love to have whoever on we even if you don't know me and you want to brag about your event that's going you know in the next couple months um, I'm going to start reaching out in the next couple days to, uh, to fill the podcast for next week. I kind of have an idea for the week after, um, but there's always room to fill stuff in. Um, Sloan gave me the opportunity to play with the schedule a little bit here, and, uh, and I'm encouraging anybody that wants to come on here and BS, no matter what motorsport it is, uh, give me a shout. Let's do this thing. Uh, I'm probably a little long-winded tonight, so I'm going to duck off of here early, but... I want you all to remember, it's all about the experience.